Hey everybody, this is Gandhi from GameCanon.co.uk. I want to do a quick video today about Planetside 2 um, and some of my thoughts about maybe aspects it's lacking or things it needs to fix while in beta. I've been playing beta a while, um, so have a lot of people, and this has a real potential to be a big game. But there's a few little quirks with it, which I think if, if go unchecked could ruin it in the long term. And that can that quite happens with games, you know, minor faults make a huge impact or, or just not even faults, just minor things that could have been done differently would change the entire aspect of the game. So I'm going to look at six things that I think Planetside 2 needs to either fix or implement. Now I want to do a wee disclaimer at the start of this to say that I am just playing the beta. They've wiped the characters so the and not all the certs are available. So the amount that I've experienced and played in the game, you know, isn't um, encompass it. it doesn't encompass everything so I may there may be aspects of this that are actually in the game and I haven't discovered yet and if they are great fantastic I apologize <laughs> for saying that you need to implement them if they're already there um, but as far as I can see they aren't okay so the first thing I want to do uh, let's talk about squad visibility on the mini map at present you can see squad mates on the larger map quite well um, however on the mini map it can be very difficult to spot them, especially if they're in a vehicle. Vehicles don't show up well at all on the minimap. This is a real problem um, because when you're in a big busy base and there's lots going on and you're in a squad, what you want to identify is your squad's location, what they're in, what they're doing, if they need assistance, that kind of thing. You need to get that very quickly. Let's remember this is advanced warfare on Planet Side 2. So, you know, we should expect to have slightly more information at our hands than a regular soldier you know in reality nowadays would have so you know they've got more sophisticated advanced equipment and technologies so you should be able to quickly locate your friends um, and I think that mini map needs to be addressed because it's very confusing just to find your teammates when you're meters from them J they're just right in the corner and you have no way of knowing and that's a bit silly and annoying at the same time uh, vehicle visibility obviously as well for the same reason uh, also because <laughs> you die very easily when getting hit by a friendly vehicle in this if you just even if you run at the side of the vehicle and just clip it a little bit it'll kill you uh, whereas in the previous planet side it would just sort of damage you at first or it would only kill you if it was going at speed and came you know straight at you I don't really have a problem with that but you should be a bit more made aware on the map maybe of the vehicles if you can see the vehicles on the mini map then you could watch their movements and watch the paths they're taking more easily uh, and I get the feeling as well that the minimap is maybe zoomed in a little too far. Again, in Planetside, uh, the original, when operating a Liberator, um, you would often use the minimap for combat because you had a tail gunner. And if you had an enemy aircraft on you and you, you're in the pilot seat, you can't see over your head. You can only, in third person view, you can only see a certain distance. You could use that map, see uh, the red reticule of the enemy vehicle. Um, on your mini map, and then you could adjust your tail to its movement, so it took part. You know, it's again, it's this a piece of technology at your disposal. So I think that needs sorted out. That's a, a big, irritating bug in the game at the moment. It needs to be looked at. Um, next thing, faction communication. Uh, okay, so I think you need to be able to communicate with your faction, no matter where you are. Specifically, we're talking here if you're in a lone wolf scenario. Okay, but even if you're in a squad or a platoon you must have access of lines of communication to your faction at whole now I'm not talking about platoons communicating or squads communicating right now because that's a different story I'm specifically looking at it from a point of view of a lone soldier or a squad of two or three people I recently found myself at an outpost there was a hot spot there so I spawned at it to aid assistance and one of the typical things happened it just happened to be like a couple of enemy uh, units um, and it was mopped up fairly quickly and everyone else flew off and I was left there you know with not much fighting to be done in the first place at a secured outpost and no mode of transportation to get away now here's the irritating thing there was loads of friendly air aircraft flying overhead with seats available in them but th no way of communicating with them other than to yell um, the previous game had a broadcast uh, whenever you were in a sphere of influence in a base and you could talk to people in that base. Now I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying there isn't a broadcast in this game but even if there was that would only encompass that outpost so I would only get them the minute the aircraft were flying over. 
that seems to me to be a bit silly. You must be able to tap into the faction network. You're a military unit, you know, you should be able to communicate with other people in some way. Um, so ways to do that. You could have a help beacon. You could have a device that you could deploy that literally puts a waypoint in the sky and its sole purpose is to say, hey, I'm here, I'd like a pickup. And everyone would know what it was for and everyone would be able to say, you know, someone's flying over an aircraft, they've got a seat, they see a beacon, oh, there's a troop down there. Go down. Maybe if you pick someone up when a beacon's deployed, you get bonus XP or something, you know, something to encourage people to do it. There's one way of doing it. Um, or you could have broadcast chat, which we had previously. This would be quite interesting because then you could have relay chat whereby if you if you took outposts, so you have a, a broadcast chat usually at a main base and it has a sphere of influence, so a certain radius which you can broadcast. When you go too far away from the base, you, you can't sort of uh, chat to people in that area via, we're talking about typing here, not voice. Um, so once you go too far, you're out width of the sphere of influence of the base and therefore you can't broadcast. But if you had an outpost, you know, attached onto it, because we're working with, you know, these blocks that are all attached together on the map and plant side too, that could create a relay between the base. You could have a line of communication. That's quite a neat idea. And then that way, if I'm at an outpost that I've dropped on and there's loads of people flying overhead, so long as it's connected to a main base, maybe then I could broadcast and say, hey, I'm at outpost da-da-da, you know, J7 on the map, aircraft, as long as they're paying attention, could come pick me up. There's another way of doing it. Uh, map grids in people's chat. Okay, so if you can... All right, so we don't let's say we don't have broadcast chat, we don't have help beacons. How about if you could just put out a call? As I say, a faction should be able to communicate with each other. It's a military unit. So what about if once every ten minutes you could put out uh, a help call, and it came up in like yellow chat or whatever, and in that was your name and your grid reference, and then you could just say really need pickup, and so your grid reference would be you know H two. And then anyone who saw that could say, oh, someone needs picked up at H2, swing on by. Just a way to get people working together more. Really simple. Um, and you could avoid spam by obviously having that time limit on it. Uh, yeah, d what about default chat? Okay, so sometimes I jump in someone's um, vehicle. And again, he's in the same faction as me. I want to communicate with him. But I don't want to slash say because I might have to get out of the vehicle or whatever. He's not in my squad, so I can't do it like that. What about if there was just a vehicle chat? And whenever you opened your chat window, instead of being default to like say or yell, what if it was default to whatever situation you're in? So if I'm in a main base and there is a broadcast chat, the default is broadcast chat. If I get in a, a vehicle, the default is vehicle chat. If I get in a galaxy, the default is galaxy chat. So I, I then, as soon as I hit type, I'm then typing to whatever situation I'm in. There's a quick way because then it's almost as if jumping in this person's vehicle I've suddenly almost become in a squad with him in a way because I'm immediately in a chat that only me and him are going to see that's quite a neat idea um, so yeah faction communication that was number two um, command chat this is a biggie and different from faction communication I think although obviously it ties in in, in planet side the original you had command rank fives and command rank fives basically could chat with each other in a special command chat and then they could chat across the continent and they kind of ruled themselves if there was anyone who just started spamming or anything the rest of the commanders would say ignore that person stick with the group and the commanders would discuss in command chat before one of them would broadcast over the continent so there was there was a chain of command that was self-imposed and it was really neat and it worked and it was fun and cool because players would come on who weren't interested in commanding and they'd have voices giving them a rough direction, rough objectives, and this was being orchestrated by a group of Command Rank 5s in a separate chat. Now in this game, as far as I'm aware, there doesn't appear to be a text command chat that I've seen. I have heard a voice command chat, so when you're leader of a squad, you can people can broadcast a vocal command chat, which is fine, except what you've got to remember is you've got local voice chat, squad voice chat, I presume if we've still got platoons, I've not made one yet, then a platoon voice chat, um, and then you've got, if you then add a command voice chat, well, come on, <laughs> and then people sit on voice servers of their own, so this isn't going to work, people aren't going to keep all these voice, they're not going to be capable, there'll be so much noise going on, they're going to start cancelling out voice chats, the first to go will probably be local voice chat, and then the second to go will probably be command voice chat, because if you're trying to lead a squad, 
yeah, you want to be communicating with the overall commanders if you're hoping to get um, a general picture of, of what the objective is, you know, guide the faction in one solid objective. But you're not going to be able to do both. Maybe if there are platoons, what we could have is the platoon leader was the only one with access to the command voice chat. So, uh, as I say, in the old plant said it was three squads make a platoon, which isn't quite right because I'm sure in the actual military it's four. But anyway, three squads would make a platoon and there would be a platoon leader. Let's say that structure is still there. I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, then the platoon leader could be the sole one with access to command chat. So you'd have a smaller group of people using the vocal command chat, a smaller group of people organizing, but those people would have under them more and more people. So you start to get a hierarchy. That is one way it could work, because it also takes, you know, whoever decides to be platoon leader knows he's going to have to manage that extra voice chat, and he will decide what he cancels out then. Um, so yeah, just, it, but it needs to be addressed, because the biggest thing about Planetside is being able to communicate your your objectives together and having, you know, command in there. And yeah, there's going to be outfits doing it, and they'll run their own voice servers, but we, we need people to be able to come on and just get that experience without needing to be in an outfit, without needing to be on a voice server, you know, that's what was good about the first plant side, loads of strangers working together, and they didn't ever need to make friends or really become an outfit together again, they could go away and come on next time and play with another random group of people, but they'd be fighting as a unit, you know, so I think that needs to be addressed. Um, outfits communicating though, as another part of this command chat, there is this lack of leadership at the moment. We need to make sure outfits can communicate. You know, yes, platoon leaders and uh, are, are chatting through the command structure overall, but outfits should be able to, you know, maybe just the officers and the leaders should be able to communicate on a chat, I think, um, because, again, not voice chat. Very big fan of text chat. Because they, they hold the biggest bodies of people, generally, the larger outfits. So we need to have them working together because they're going to shape what happens on the continent effectively. If they all pick a direction to go, that's where the body is going to be. That's where the main surge is going to be. So they should we should ease their ability to communicate, not make it more difficult. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything for a command chat. Oh, that was another thing I was going to say. If we implement these things, I would be more than happy to put up some instructional videos. Okay. A lot of planets I can be complex, but it's very rewarding. You know, if we get these structures put in place, I will stick up videos on game canon about it. You know, I'll I'll talk everyone through the various ways it works. And I'll be doing that anyway when Planet Side's released and I can really get in depth with the different aspects of it. Um but I'm more than happy to. So if we if you know if you start rolling out these implementations, I'll cover them and I'll put helpful videos up uh to make sure that everyone's switched on about it. Okay, so the th oh, what we're we on now fourth. Jeez, it's a long list. Right, fourth, <laughs> fourth thing that I think needs to be maybe tweaked is the right word to use. Target identification at a distance. It's not realistic. It's better since a patch, um, but it's not realistic. When I see a vehicle in the distance, it's not. I mean, the way real military works is you go very much on the shape of a vehicle and you can then identify it because you know military forces generally don't have the same shape tanks for example so you can tell a different tank from a distance Th that possibility is it's less uh, you know in the in the old um, planet side you knew a prowler when it rolled over the hill you knew a mag rider when it floated over the hill <laughs> you know you the only things that kind of bridge those were the, the galaxies and the sunders, obviously, their shape were the same unilateral across all the factions. So the actual bodies of the vehicles um, aren't entirely different, especially between the TR and the NC, and that makes it difficult to actually go on your own eyes, which I think you should be able to. If there isn't an inbuilt mechanic for target identification, then you, you should be helped by the graphics, and the TR and the NC, that's smudged, and even when it's not, even when it's the VS at a certain distance, it just, you know, it loses it. Um, it loses its shape and colours. Um, but I think it needs to be addressed best with just a slightly identifying targets as friend or foe from a slightly longer range. Because again, we're advanced technology here. And I'm having to hold off shooting quite a while to wait to get a, you know, 
friendly or enemy reticle up and he probably comes in knowing I'm an enemy because of the direction he's say it's a reaver has flown in he knows he's coming into enemy territory I'm not sure if he's a friendly and I have to hold off firing now I'm sure there are probably implants that will help this identification purpose but at the moment the distance it's not on it's too close that you still don't know if they're friend or foe um, and it's not realistic so I think that needs tweaked that needs looked at um, okay faction network this is a cool idea, I think. This is an implementation. And I don't like to reference other companies, but when you think of this, think about Bungie and what they did with Halo, okay? And the Bungie stats, you could upload screenshots and videos and you could order pictures. I've got one up, up there. It was really cool. It was awesome. And I think Planet Side 2 has a really good scope to implement that in-game. PC games need to start doing that. Let's have it in game. Let's have a faction network where you can just open up a window. You're probably idling in Sanctuary, and you can look at outfits profiles, therefore players within them, and just look at a profile summary. And why can't we upload like a three favorites of our own screenshots? Maybe have one of those screenshots as like a profile picture, and maybe our three favorite videos. Cool feature Plant Side too. You can record videos in game. That's brilliant. And you can upload them to your YouTube. That's brilliant. Okay, you can't edit them before you upload them, but come on, let's go easy on them. It's a really cool feature. You can also upload them to your Twitch TV account. It's really cool. It's great. But why can't we have a faction network where in-game we get that feeling of community? We don't want to tab out and open up browsers. We don't want another thing running off our processor power and whatnot. Let's get something really basic but good to look at, easy on the eyes, in-game. That'd be quite cool. Another aspect of this is, and I know some people might not like it, in-game mail. Okay, I said this about the original Planet Side. The biggest problem it had was it was claiming to be an MMO, MMO FPS, and there are aspects of an RPG you can implement to MMO FPS, which enhance it, which don't make it an RPG. Okay, we're not talking about having items and trading and crafting, but in-game mail would be good. So if we could implement it, I think it'd be a positive thing. You know, a nice little Star Trek style console screen, or well, really what I mean by that is just a futuristic looking console screen. And you can have a little inbox with mail. That'd be quite good. It would maybe help outfits communicate, players communicate, it could leave each other messages if they're not online. I think that's a good idea. Just, let's have a look at that. Um, final thing, this is kind of a throwaway thing just because I think it'd be brilliant and it's something for the future faction cooperation events right so all the factions working together how I imagine this working is it's a special event basically each server would would have its own event okay now SOE could could record these individual events for the individual servers and release them as videos so people could watch them back so let's say an event is a native creature you know, spurts up out the ground and threatens to destroy all the factions, so they must come together and destroy it. Okay? And this event's going to take place on Friday at 10 pm. And the way it would work is the servers would go down, say, an hour before. And then when everyone joined the server, they would all be put in a in a holding pen essentially where they could spawn their vehicles and get ready and we'd have like the TR, the VS or the NC, or we could have them all in the same place. And basically for that event you wouldn't be able to you'd be friendly, so shooting them would give you you know grief points and then upon a certain hour we'd open up the gates and we'd charge forward and there'd be bases we need to take as a group and we need to go on forward and then eventually you know wipe out the main base or the main stronghold of whatever this creature is it's a crazy idea but how much fun would that be as a one you know one-off event and then if so we you know recorded videos of it had people in game to record the videos of the event happening and, and put up a short two minute video for each server that'd be awesome that'd be cool I may want to play Planet Side more, okay? That's just a cheeky one. I'd like that to happen though. So there are just a few things, and I want to put this video out there because I've always had a big passion for Planet Side the original, and I just felt that, you know, with little tweaks, it could have been so much more. You know, they did try to release stuff, but I think it was let down by maybe, maybe a lack of not a lack of creativeness but maybe the lack of funding behind creativeness and I think when we did have stuff released it was maybe slightly in the wrong direction I think the you know core combat was okay the caverns were okay but I think there's other areas we could have improved first um, and there's you know there's lots of little changes you can make to Planet Side 2 still before launch that would just smooth it out just make it that really flush nice running game 
you know I love games when you when you think oh I wish I could do that and then you find out you can you know oh I wish I could drop them a mail oh I can drop them a mail that's cool I wish I could communicate you know between platoon leaders oh I can da, 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 da. that's cool um yeah we should have loads of that's cool moments in Planet Side 2 so you know if you've got any comments what you'd like to see in Planet Side or things you think need fixed leave a comment let's discuss it you know that's the only way to get things changed is come together as a community and uh Thanks for watching the video. Cheers.